by 1991, that's when the third Colombo uh, right. family war uh, started. Right. So talk about the start uh, of this okay. war and what well, actually that, happened. That's a very important point because, you know, just the general public or readings or people that aren't weren't involved don't realize that the war started sooner, way sooner, although there was no shooting. There was tensions after Vicarina became the acting boss. Some people weren't happy with that, but they had to listen because it was Junior's wishes, Junior Persico. So as time goes on, and this is what I was talking about, where I was proposed, there was about a year or two where Vicarina from 87, 86, 87, 88 was only straightening guys out, making guys, bringing them in, in his area, in Queens and Long Island. He wasn't making Brooklyn guys anymore. He was making captains, bumping good fellas up, giving them their stripes, again, that were closer to him, closer to Queens. So we saw the power thing happening. We were talking about it with our captains, who were Junior Persico's nephews and sons and uh, brothers. But there was nothing serious that happened. About 88 give or take, maybe even 89. And like I said, there's a lot of rumblings. There's rumblings. There's bodies turning up that were uh, excused as somebody didn't make a payment or he, he was disrespectful, but it was more power play. And Greg was telling me this, you know, and he, and in hindsight, as we know, he had pre information. So the things he was telling me were accurate. So there's a, a very historic meeting. He gets a call. Uh, actually, a guy comes to the club that I know, Chips, and tells me that Jimmy, who's Jimmy Angelina, our official consul year for many, many years, would like to see Greg tonight at his club. So I bring the message to Greg. I get in a call with Greg that night, and I bring him to Jimmy's club. Now, Jimmy was the, was, was a, was the type of consul year that uh, what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be trusted by all the men. Your job is to save lives. So if they call you to a meeting, you have no problem going. I mean, that's just the way it is. If it's 2 o'clock in the morning, you go there knowing you're not going to be killed. Okay? And that's the feeling everybody had about Jimmy. He was trusted. So we go to this meeting, and I'm about to walk away with chips. But Greg, he's, so, he's always smart. He's always that step ahead. He says, Larry, you could stay. He says, Jimmy, you don't mind, do you? And nobody's going to disagree with Greg. He says, no, no, Larry could stay. So I'm standing there with him, and they're talking, and Jimmy explains to Greg that Vic Arena asked him who he would side with if he decided to take the family position officially. We need all the captains unanimously. So Greg, I'm thinking to myself, this guy just got out of the hospital after two months. He's half dead. He probably doesn't even know what's going on. He looks at Jimmy and he says, Jimmy, he says, I, I am sick. I'm half dead. He says, I, I, will, I will line up wherever the chips fall. I, I, I will stay in line. He couldn't take a position. So Jimmy says, all right, Greg, well, uh, well, we'll get back to you, whatever. We drive off. Now I was close enough to Greg to ask. I says, Greg, why don't you declare yourself? And he looks at me and he says, if I would have said yes, that I would back Vic. Jimmy is the family consul year. If he goes back to Junior and says that Vic is uh, recruited Greg and Greg is going, Greg's dead. Okay? If he says, no, I will not, Jimmy's going to tell Vic, Greg won't come over. Vic has to kill him. He, and he digested this like that. So now I'm saying to myself, wow, what treachery. Less than two weeks later, Jimmy's disappeared. Nobody knows where Jimmy is. You don't kill consul years. It's, it's taboo. Uh, it's almost worse than killing a boss. Okay, so no, but eventually we find out he's not coming around. He's done. He's gone. Vic Arena now makes Carmine Sessa the new consul year. He knows this will make Greg happy because Carmine Sessa grew up under Greg. We grew up in the same club together for 12, 15 years. Nah, 12 years, me and Carmine. And we did hits together. We did beatings together. You know, 
And here he is, he's not a concierge. So Vic asks him now the same question he asked Jimmy. Go poll the captains, see if you can get them to come over to my side. Go see Greg. He comes to see Greg. Greg starts laughing at him. He says, you see what just happened to Jimmy? He says, you're not going to get these guys to come over. They're relatives. They've been under Junior for 20, 30 years. He says, it's impossible. You're going to get clipped next. So Carmine panics now, Fesser. He puts a, a quick team together. If he was smart, he would have asked Greg, should we take Vic out? He probably would have said, no, not yet. But if, if he really wanted to take Vic out, he should have told Greg, Vic would have been dead. There would have been no war. Instead, he goes and puts a team together that, for whatever reason, they weren't successful. Vic spotted them on the, in the street. I wasn't there, so I don't really know. Uh, they take off. And now there's an official split. That lasts about a year. Negotiation, one negotiation after the other. So we're in a Cold War. And there's a lot of things going on, like businesses stopped amongst each other. And there were beefs over number runners, like one of our number guys died, Joe Sapp. Good fella. I think he got bumped up to captain under Vic. He had a huge numbers business, like 300000 a week. That came to us because he was also grew up under Greg. So once he dies, Wild Bill, a captain under Vic Arena, we could go on with these names, it'll get a little confusing, uh, decides he should get th those numbers because Joe was under him at the time. He was like the underboss, Billy. Greg says, tells the runner, you bring the numbers to us. So we're sent for a, a meeting to go meet with Wild Bill. We go to his club. I'll never forget it. It's a Thursday night. There's seven of us. We pull up. We turn the corner. This is going to sound almost pathological, but anybody, there's a few people that were there and they'll tell you how many, there had to be a hundred guys lining the street waiting for us. When we pulled up, I remember saying to myself, and I tell you about weakness, that I'm in the front seat with a friend of mine, Joe Fish. The middle car is Jimmy and Greg. The back car has four of our heavyweights. So there's about seven of us, whatever it was, maybe eight. And I remember saying to myself, I think I should just keep going. But I, in the back of my mind, I said, if I pull over, Greg will rip me a new one in front of everybody. So I pull right into the driveway. We get out. There had to be six or eight guys surrounding us with guns. I see a gun behind uh, Billy's Lincoln. It's like a, an AK. There's guys on the roof of his club pointing rifles at us. And I'm not exaggerating one iota. I, I promise. I almost feel silly saying all this stuff. Greg gets out of the car. They surround him. I had to tell them when they told me, put my hands on the car. I looked at the guy, says, you cops, am I under arrest? And they laughed. It sort of reduced the tension a little bit. I said, Greg is here to talk to Billy. So they escort him in. We're out there for about two hours. And during the two hours, the guys that are around us are coming over to me and Jimmy because we're like the eldest guys now. We had to recruit uh, guys, younger guys from the neighborhood to be with us because Greg Jr.'s whole crew was in prison. So. They're coming to me for advice. And I remember telling them, we had one guy that was an ex-cop and he had a Glock that shot like 16 or 32 rounds. I don't even know. We all had revolvers because we were underfunded for this war. Uh, so I remember telling them if any shooting starts, you know, just fire. I, I told uh, the, the Dean who had the, the, big, the big gun, I said, you just fire at the guy with the machine gun and we'll all run. I said, we can't win. I said, we got to just try to survive. So we're nervous. We spread out in case they started shooting. After about two hours, and I'm watching one heavyweight after another show up to this meeting, Joe Scopo, Patty Amato, Joe Waverly, Nikki Black. I mean, every heavyweight, and it's just Greg in there. If it was the other way around, and there was this war situation, Greg, they would have never walked out of our club. They would have ended the war right there. So he comes out arm in arm with Joe Scopo, the underboss from that side. He comes over, he gets in the car with me this time, and we drive back. And he explains to me what went on in there, and uh, we're in good position. They think they're with them, but we're not. So now we played the middle for a while. But once we get back to my pool room, I remember telling Greg on behalf of all the guys, and I said it to him just like this, it's Greg, don't ever do that to us again. 
Because I think he was forgetting that maybe he was old. He had a couple of years left to live. All those guys were young, young families, young kids. We could have walked into a slaughter. And he left. He says, I had it under control. So I said, all right, whatever. But a couple of days later, and it shows you, what I call this, I think in my book, was the, uh, the Cold War, the War of Will. Who was going to be show more strength? The same thing happens with another number situation. And this fat Sal from the other side says, I'll come and see you tomorrow, meaning one of our runners. So we go there, just the four of us, me, Jimmy, Greg, and I think another uh, Richie or somebody. There was four of us. And I'm standing out front with Jimmy. I'm waiting for Sal to pull up. We see his big white Lincoln pull up. As he pulls up, I open the door and I say, Greg, he's here. Greg starts walking out the door. The guy takes off. So we won that number thing too. So we had all the numbers and Nikki Black was upset with that. I remember him saying, I thought we weren't going to do business with these people, but Joe Scopo said, not Greg. Greg doesn't count. 